Hello, everybody. Welcome to the last lightning talk for today. And welcome, Ralph. Ralph is a meteor meteorologist by trade, but does IT for the past 20 years. He works for Booking.com and will show us two tools for monitoring and debugging large L3 class networks. Welcome uh, to the stage, Ralph. Thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as I said, my name is Ralph. Uh, I do work for Booking.com in Amsterdam as a network engineer. Um, and I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about two tools we use to monitor some of our infrastructure. Um, to get one thing out of the way first, none of these are open source as of yet. I'm working on this and I'm hoping to um, have these available for, in, uh, for the outside world um, soon. Um, so first, the problem. Um, Booking.com, as probably others in this conference as well, uh, we run a lot of our infrastructure on large scale layer three clause networks. Um, that means lots of switches, lots of links between them. There's ECMP basically everywhere. Uh, and we support any cast um, coming from the servers, meaning there are ranges allocated for any cast and any host can advertise host routes from these ranges to the network and we will carry that traffic. And on the network side, we don't particularly know or care which server announces which any cast prefix. And as usual, things go wrong in this and it can be very difficult to figure out what exactly it is that is going wrong because there are so many devices involved and there are so many paths that a packet can go through. Um, and I'd like to quickly talk about two tools we try to deal with this and generate actionable data from this. The first is called PathMapper, which is for ad hoc um, debugging, and the second is called Ariadne, which is for continuous monitoring. Um, the most important or the most pressing thing I find when debugging these things is having a reproducing case. So if someone comes to me with a problem and says, I can't reach X from Y, um, um, then it is important to get a reproducible case where you can say, okay, it's these, it's these uh, combinations of source IP, destination IP, source port, destination port when going through the ECMP fabric that is hitting problems. Um, PathMapper is a uh, small tool that is designed to, uh, to go through the space and try to find problematic tuples. Um, it runs interactively on a machine. It uh, generates and sends controlled traffic, source port, destination IP, source port, destination port, um, to chosen endpoints and services. Um, when it's done, it will show you what worked, what failed, what it can't tell if it failed or not. Um, it will group those by ports. Um, for some services, uh, for some anycasted services, it might be able to actually show me the list of endpoints it was able to connect to. So if I have an anycast constellation, um, it, it might be able to tell me these are the anycast servers that I actually was able to reach. Um, for this, it supports DNS. And, and it can do identification for DNS. It supports general TCP ports. It supports HTTPS and, it's, and can I do ID for those. It supports TCP and SSL and can ID for, do ID for those. And it also supports Ariadne. We'll get to Ariadne in a second. Um, the results of this tool sort of look like this. So this is, this is a snippet from, from the output. It has sent 100 probes. It, 100 of these were successful, unfortunately, I didn't have time to prepare a case where we can see actual failures. Um, as you can see, it identified um, five hosts that it could talk to, um, called LWS 102, 101, and so on and so forth. Um, zero failures, zero unknowns. It will show me a nice uh, kind of diagram of the of the successes and failures in a in a sort of square form. Um, this is done because it's often it often um, failures in ECMP fabrics. Uh, on specific links produce patterns in this and humans are pretty good at picking up patterns. Um, it will also give me a list of ports that succeeded, that failed and that were unknown. Um, it will also give me, and I don't have a screenshot of this, um, for an example failed port, if it has found any, it will show me for ex um, command lines for, for example, traceroute or MTR or Paris traceroute that I could use to then actually find the path um, that 
the uh, the packet took where I encountered a failure, and hopefully that will point me to a specific link or a specific device um, that doesn't work as expected. Um, the reason Path Mapper exists is um, because um, I was sorely missing a tool like this um, while having a debug session in the middle of the night where one of our um, core network devices had an inconsistency between the RIP and the FIP and was discarding some traffic and finding out which device actually was influencing this was a lot more difficult than it really should have been. And so I decided that we, we needed a tool that could spam repeatable traffic and make it this easier to identify. Um, the second tool I would like to talk about is called Ariadne. Um, Ariadne is a continuously running distributed end-to-end -end monitoring system. Um, we have agents deployed across the server fleet. Um, these agents talk to a central controller. Um, the controller selects a subset of agents, and right now this is two per rack, um, to send probing UDP traffic to other agents and other racks, and that uh, they will report the result of this to the controller. Um, we then pull those results from the controller into a, uh, a pipeline that con uh, consists of Kafka, Elasticsearch, and Graphite um, for processing and analysis. Um, this is sort of what this looks like. So there's a controller in the middle. Um, there are agents that talk to the controller. There's a resolver that talks to the controller. The, the job of the resolver is to find out where the agents actually are because the agents don't know. They just connect to the controller and um, it's the job of the resolver to find out, okay, which rack, which data center, and so on and so forth, uh, is this agent in, and enrich this information and send this to the controller. And there's a scheduler, which picks up the list of registered agents from the controller um, and builds a probing schedule. So this is the component that figures out who should probe whom. Um, there's a result mover component which fetches the results that um, have, have hopefully arrived at the controller and pushes this to uh, our processing pipeline uh, where this gets stored, um, aggregated, and put into a form that humans can easily consume and that we can uh, run alerts of. Um, the part of the infrastructure that is inside this dotted orange line right now is um, built completely for dealing with failure in a way that it's not really important that um, that agents stay connected to, to the controller. It's not really important that uh, that agents pick up the schedules that were made for them. The only thing that's really important in the end is the results that come out of the system. Um, this is what drives the monitoring and this is what drives the the um, the view of the of the overall system. So um, everything within this dotted line um, can fail. To, to a point, as long as we get enough results out of the end of the, uh, 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 as long as we get enough results uh, out of the system in the end, um, this works out pretty well. Um, things we get out of this, um, for example, we measure connectivity in general, we measure packet loss, we measure latency. Um, all of this then gets compared against the SLIs, SLOs that we have for our customers. Um, this gives us ad hoc availability information for connectivity between on every scale level that we have. So we can easily query rack to rack information. We can query DC to DC information, AZ to AZ, region to region. Um, so if uh, there are potential problems in the network, we have an easy way to see if there have been changes in the overall way that the network behaves very quickly. And that allows us to easily dig deeper into what might be, might be the specific problem um, that we're dealing with. Um, one example that comes out of this are graphs like these. So this, um, this is, these are graphs that show um, latencies uh, between different parts of an AZ. Um, and we have these, as I said, for pretty much all scale levels um, that, the net, uh, that we run the network from between two racks to between regions that are on, on different sides of the planet. Um, well, thank you very much for, for listening for, uh, to me. And if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them.
Yeah, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. There is actually one question uh, from the audience, and this is uh, how successful have you been with the tools to trace down or track down all the potential issues in the past uh, since you have the tools in place? Um, PathMapper is one. Uh, path, uh, I'm going to answer this in, in, in two different stages. PathMapper is one of these things that is that you probably need very rarely, but if you need it, it is extremely useful. To, to track down uh, track down problems. So after the incident that pushed me to actually write this, there have been one or two instances where this was very helpful in tracking down uh, in tracking down a, a problem. Um, and Ariadne is something that, as I said, it it runs all the time, and we run automated alerts off of this, and it picks up on things that I'm not quite sure we would have noticed otherwise. And also for um, for interactive um, going through the data and finding problems, um, this gets used um, pretty regularly um, for uh, uh, trying to, to track down problems. Okay, thank you very I much. I hope that answered and, the question. Uh, if, if not, I'm, I'll be around. Yes, so if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with Ralph. Ralph, thank you very much for being here and hopefully we see your tools uh, published open source soon. I hope so as well. Thank you. Thank you.